Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand the different methodologies to reduce dynamic power. In the previous clip, we have already seen static power, the components which contribute to static power, and we also saw a few techniques to reduce static power. We also saw the basics of dynamic power. Now, in this clip, we will understand how to minimize dynamic power, and then finally, in one of the other clips, we will see the low power design considerations which are going to be very important for a designer. Let's quickly get started. In the previous clip, we have already seen that dynamic power is equal to alpha, which is nothing but the switching activity factor, into the load capacitance CL, VDD square, into frequency. We have already seen this over a time interval of T, and we have found this value. In real sense, this is not the complete dynamic power. This is nothing but the switching power, which I have shown here. Because dynamic power constitutes of two parts, one is a switching power, which is already seen on your screen. Another one is a short circuit power. Now, what is a short circuit power or dissipation? It's nothing but, suppose, let's say this is my inverter. And we all know that our inputs are not idle. It has finite rise time and finite fall time. It might so happen that at specific inputs, both my PMOS and NMOS transistors are turned on. In that case, there will be a direct path from VDD to ground for the current to flow and this is nothing but the short circuit power dissipation. For this clip, we are focusing on switching power which I am going to call it as dynamic power and we will see how to reduce it. Now, dynamic power can be reduced if I reduce any of these four terms. Switching activity factor, load capacitance CL, it has quadratic, VDD has a quadratic effect on dynamic power. So if I can reduce this, it would be a great help or if I can reduce frequency. Let's quickly understand how we can do this or is it possible to reduce this to a drastic extent so that we can save or we can reduce the dynamic power dissipation. Now let's start with switching activity factor alpha. A switching activity factor alpha is equal to one for a clock. We have already seen this in a previous clip. Why it is one for a clock? Because suppose this is my clock in one cycle, this one cycle, my clock rise and fall both takes place in one cycle so alpha is highest for a clock most of the data inputs will switch only once in this cycle so if that's the case only one switching is happening then they would have a switching activity factor of 0.5 however the static logic gates or static cmos logic have a very low activity factor something equal to 0.1 when i say static this was nothing but a static inverter right ideally the inputs of the static gates don't change for quite a few cycles because the output is steady and if that is happening then the switching activity factor for static gates is very low and hence the dynamic power dissipation for them for static gates is going to be very low however in case of dynamic circuits we have already seen dynamic inverters dynamic nands and so on and so forth we know that because there are clocks present to drive the dynamic circuits that activity factor is going to be high and hence is there any possible way where we can reduce this then it would be a boon in saving the dynamic power so there is a way because in sequential circuits right on an ic where there are sequential blocks all the blocks are not active at the same time some blocks are in use let's say an example this is an ic which has a lot of sequential blocks sequential means all of them are driven by clock and clock leads to a major chunk of dynamic power dissipation now you would see that all the blocks are not active at the same time some blocks might be active depending on what application or depending on what you are looking to do with your inputs or what type of processing you are looking to do. So all blocks are not used simultaneously and this gives us a very good opportunity to reduce dynamic power. So the technique which we use here is nothing but a clock getting technique where clock to an idle portion. So as we said that these are some of the blocks, this might be used but this all blocks might be idle and they might not be doing any computation. So the clock to an idle portion is disabled and when the clock is disabled we see that the switching activity factor will drastically reduce and this will help us in saving some of the dynamic power dissipation. This is a typical scenario in a typical synchronous circuit such as say a microprocessor only a portion of the circuit would be active at a given time and hence if we can shut down the idle portion of the circuit idle means which is not active the necessary power consumption can be prevented. Now, how can we do this? As I mentioned, it's clock gating or it's nothing but masking the clock. Let's quickly understand that. Suppose this is my latch, which is operating on clock and this is my input to the latch. Now, what might happen is we might see that this latch is idle for a long period of time. So we will not give it a clock 
to its we will not give it a clock to its internal clock what we will do is we will give it a gated clock which means that this is an output of an AND gate which has an input clock and enable so whenever this circuit is active that time enable will go high and then whenever the positive edge comes on the clock then this circuit would be triggered. Let's understand this to the waveform. This is clock, this is enable and this is gated clock. So when the enable is low, it means this latch is not active. Here we want the latch to compute. So whenever the next clock edge comes, it should start processing and that's exactly what I've drawn here. In this cycle or in this edge, the clock will take or the latch will take the new clock or will take its input clock and correspondingly take a new input and process it. So what we are doing here is in the remaining cycle of the clock when the latch is not needed the enable signal is low and hence we can make our clock to be disabled for such an idle case and hence save on some dynamic power dissipation so that is nothing but clock gating for you